Why did I stop selling essential oils? Well, make sure to watch this video all the way to the end to find out. Hey, this is Lance McGowan with Essential Oils Me, and why did I stop selling essential oils? Well, actually, this is from another video that I'm going to do a review of, so that, number one, you don't have to watch that whole video, unless you want to, which is okay, but I'm going to cover an overview of that, as well as my take on exactly what was said. Before we get into that overview, make sure to smash the like button if you've learned something new, found this video entertaining, or watched it all the way until the end. This helps the YouTube algorithm share it with more people like yourself. And if you didn't like this video, it's okay. Let me know what was incomplete or inaccurate in the comment section below so I can make improvements in the future. Now let's get into why this video is even being made. I got an email from a woman and she said, Hi Lance, I really appreciate you and your helpful video reviews. I've been a wellness advocate with doTERRA for three years now in Europe. Love the product and company. I'm used to people commenting negatively here and there or sending me a negative article or video. Clickbait. This came up twice, two separate new individuals this week. And this is another reason why I do videos. It's because of, you know, other folks going through similar things and me being a truth seeker, want to know the answer so that I have a reasonable response when people ask me or, you know, leave a comment down below. <laughs> so it's all good. Whether you're for or against, I like to know all perspectives because that's what a truth seeker wants to get, right? The, the answer, whether it's in my favor or not. And so this was a part of the description in the video that I'll have right here. It'll also be in the link in the description below. They went on to say, oils in and of themselves are fine. There are oils in the Bible, after all. It's the idolatry and new age marketing that are the problem. Former essential oil distributor Liberty Rose Brewster explains how essential oil blends are marketed as magical formula blends such as abundance, trauma, recovery, and forgiveness with new age teachings blended in as a christian liberty could no longer support this idolatrous marketing and this is from doreen virtue and this was a little interview that they did so what i'm going to do next is actually just give a summary of the main points that they made all throughout the video so i watched their video and then just took notes on every main point of contention or the things that they disagreed with or didn't like. And to give you a little background, Liberty Rose Brewster, she was in Young Living from February 2017 to October 2019. And there are 13 main points that they made and I'm just going to go over them and give my take on each one and then go from there. The first point that they made was that oils are used for yoga and I didn't participate in that myself and promote them personally. And so yoga is not traditionally or historically found in the Christian faith. I can understand that, but when you do it just as a form of exercise, minus the religious or relationship-based aspect of that with regards to God, then, you know, it's a totally, you know, separate thing. So I understand what they're saying, but at the same time, there it, it's, it's what meaning we attach to things at the same time, right? And the intent. Intent is important. Meaning and intent. The second point that they made is, why are so many Christian women were so deep into yoga and oils? Well, there probably is a element of like, hey, God created everything on this earth and essential oils, even though man kind of either steam distilled or, you know, extracted them from you know, cold pressing. And then yoga has historically been from a different faith. They're just wondering like, hey, why is there so much of a tie between that? And the thing that I do yoga stretches for is for what I just said, yoga stretches. I don't do it for the religious aspect. I do it because they have stretches that are really great for, you know, loosening up muscles, warming them up before I exercise. And that is one reason why they may be incorporated because you can use oils for tight muscles so you can move quicker and better, especially deep blue. But they're specifically talking about young living. And so there's other oils that they have. The third point they made was I had not been going to church and was entrenched into young living. So it's kind of like, well, I'm not going to church, but young living could be my new church or family that's like a church. I think that fam the familial aspect is kind of what binds and a sense of belonging, because that's like more Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? You got self-actualization at the top, which very few people reach. That's like less than 2%. And then at the very bottom, you have getting all your basic needs met for food, shelter, water, clothing, all that stuff. And then you keep going up for belonging and safety. I think that's the link between Young Living and the church or in network marketing and the church is the familial aspect or a sense of belonging. And I can relate to that. that that's definitely a reason why 
but that's not a reason to not go to church, right? And so, but at the same time, having a relationship with God or Christ or whoever you believe in is something that could be up for discussion or something that could be talked about uh, reasonably, right? And then the fourth point they make is, I found myself defending the Young Living products and it forced me to look at their mission and advertising. And yes, I would get comments on my doTERRA videos and other customers asking me about Young Living because, you know, a couple of founders and a couple of reps from Young Living at the time came out of Young Living and into doTERRA. So it's, it's valid questions. They're just saying, hey, I was defending Young, Young Living, but when I looked into it deeper, maybe I was being defensive or maybe I didn't have strong ground to stand on. And I've covered that with the Young Living versus doTERRA lawsuit outcome and how doTERRA won that lawsuit. And then there's other people that are like, well, Young Living would have won if they would have submitted evidence in the, you know, before the statute of limitations came over. And it's just like, hey, let's stop making excuses. Let's look at the facts. And the facts show that doTERRA was awarded over a million dollars from Young Living due to that and some other stuff too. And then Young Living was fined. And then I've also done videos on Young Living's test results with their lavender and that update. So there's a lot of stuff. And so I can understand why that's going on. And some people may interpret what I just said as bashing. I'm simply stating facts. It's simply stuff that happened. And yet, me stating objective facts, meaning looking at things from both sides, is all of a sudden bashing or negative. It's not. It's just somebody gets triggered with the truth because they don't want to hear it or don't want to deal with it. And that's real. All right, number five point that they made. I would be directly responsible if people use the blend abundance to bring financial prosperity. So very similar with the church called Prosperity Gospel, meaning, you know, if you give, you shall receive. Um, similar to what the oils, you know, hey, if you, if you join the business opportunity, you're going to be a millionaire. You're going to get the Ferrari or the mansion type of language. And, you know, I've talked about that in other videos comparing other network marketing companies. And really the success financially that comes from a network marketing company is based on five main things that the anti-MLMers don't mention in their argument at all. And when I do bring it up, they find excuses or try to poke holes or discount things without self-reflecting or doing some type of analysis as to how these play out. But number one is your skills, your goals, your effort, the quantity and quality of your network and your lead generation system are going to determine how well you do financially in a network marketing company when you want to do it as a business and most people just do it as a customer and that is perfectly fine. And so that's that's what people don't realize here uh, when they're, you know, super anti-MLM or they go from pro-MLM to anti-MLM because of a lot of points that they're making. Before I get into my next point, I want to mention that I'm with doTERRA, so the other company, Ooh. <laughs> and that is the main competitor to Young Living. And at this point, I'm talking to two types of people. One is if you're not in doTERRA and open to learning more about how to become a wholesale customer or wellness advocate, then my natural solutions for your health book on Amazon has been specifically designed for you. Investing in this step-by-step -step system will show me that you're serious about improving your quality of life and willing to take your health to the next level. The second person that's watching this video is if you're in doTERRA already, then I've included other videos and book recommendations in the description area below when it comes to product education or growing your own business. All right, so the number six point that they made is the new angle is new age, universal energy, biofield, mind, body, spirit fears, and law of attraction. I say this is a valid point, right? There's a lot of things that are, you know, maybe not core to the Christian faith or, you know, I mean, but then the question comes, how far do you want to go down that rabbit hole? I mean, the whole calendar system or the Gregorian calendar system is based on you know, gods that weren't a part of the Christian faith either. You know what I mean? Like, so even our days of the week, you know, how, how far are we going to go where we just don't follow things? Um, is it indirect? Is it direct? Is it certain points in history? And so are we going to cherry pick what we do want to believe? Like, do we not celebrate Christmas because, you know, the Christmas tree has nothing to do with Jesus, right? And so, like, what does that have to do with it? It doesn't, right? But it's part of the tradition now, which is now... If you don't celebrate it, now you're, you're seeing... And now we got to say, we can't say Merry Christmas, you got to say Happy Holidays. And so it's now like, hey, we're going to use the symbolic elements that aren't Christian, but then we can't call it Christian, and now it's this symbolism that's, you know... So, I get it. Things can get lost. I think my main point is, do we understand, again, it goes down to the points I've made before, but what's the intent? Do we understand, you know, again, why we're doing it, and, and do we know a little bit of history, right? Do we know a little bit of why things came to be... And I think that's just some things to, to factor in. All right, point number seven here is the Facebook group and trainings were too much 
into Word and Faith, or NAR, which is New Apostolic Reformation. I think at this point it's important to distinguish the different types of Christians. First, there's nominal Christians, which are the most of people out there, meaning the Christian by name only. Then there's the ones who have been baptized. Then there's ones who have been born again, a professed faith in Jesus Christ, or turning from sins and putting their trust in Christ. And then there's the very bottom, <laughs> small percent, it's like less than 3% or less than 2%, and it's the, those Christians that have a biblical worldview, meaning they believe in the core tenets, you know, the Bible is true, devil is real, there is a heaven and hell, you know, Jesus did die on the cross, rise in three days. There's a lot of things like that, and so very few people actually believe those or find problems with those if they're not, you know, this biblical worldview Christian or biblical worldview Christ follower and they're just talking about hey this Facebook group is you know straying away from things and I could get that but that's where discernment comes in you know separating the truth from the lie and with any company organization there's always going to be groups or um, diversity groups or certain things that don't align with your values and beliefs but you're still earning a paycheck from them or you're earning money from them and it's important to just live out the values and beliefs that you may want others to have and maybe you'll rub off on them there you go or to vote with your dollar and go somewhere else if it's that you know drastic of a violation of your own values and beliefs which they did they left young living so <laughs> there you go um, point number eight they made was thinking that there is magical powers to these oils is where the idolatry comes in okay and so yeah i tell people the essential oils are not a magic wand they're you know a supplement they enhance or improve your quality of life if you know how to use them properly and there's nothing magical about them. I mean, your body does all the healing when it gets what it needs and it stops getting what it doesn't need. And that, again, comes down to the discernment, which is the ability to separate truths from lies. And I would argue, you know, have critical thinking skills, problem-solving skills, which isn't taught in schools, really. <laughs> and so I understand if people don't really get that. Or, you know, you could hold an oil up as this is my savior right because it helped me and that's fine um we can just say that it helped me and this is my go-to oil and that's what i say for a lot of oils um there we go number nine point my concern is that people get addicted to the oils and that's a sign of idolatry essential oils are not a drug but essential oils are a supplement and they are a supplement to our life and it's a choice to use them daily and more of a habit, a healthy habit is what I would call them. Some people may say, you know, like, hey, I'm addicted to certain things because I do it every day. <laughs> or some people are like, I can stop smoking anytime I want. And they'd be smoking and be like, see, I stopped. Now I'm going to start again. <laughs> you know, it's just like, all right, well, they're not, like, the essential oils can be a healthy habit, but they're not habit forming in the negative sense, like smoking or alcohol or other drugs like that, because essential oils are not a drug. And so they are a supplement from a plant based source cold pressed or steam distilled but i get what they're saying some people could uh maybe put those higher up on the priority list of like your faith in god or the church and then there's like above that there's essential oils <laughs> you know so I, I can get that but that's not um something i struggle with but i i can see why and where they're coming from number 10 i have a problem with the artificial blends that are some magical formula well the brand i'm with doesn't have that problem um, and I've talked about that. <laughs> so they're again with Young Living. And so that, um, that's a valid point. I will say that's a valid point. And the <laughs> especially the artificial part. <laughs> so we're going to move on to point 11. And they say an oil is not going to make you any more sanctified or in tune with him with a capital H. That's true. That's true. Uh, repenting from sins and putting your faith in Jesus Christ, a part of the Christian faith, is what will allow that. And understanding the gospel and the resurrection a lot of other things now we're getting into a bible school teaching but <laughs> but that's what they're you know they were like hey i want to focus on the faith here and at the same time the oils are conflicting with that because of what i'm hearing and what i have noticed and this is just being real i have noticed when i was going to a church regularly there was an aspect of like hey our body's a temple right be pure especially in a lot of different areas but at the same time, let's order pizza and have that be served and let's drink soda and pop and have all these little kids run around like crazy in the, in the kids' ministry. 
and it's kind of, you know, I saw contradictions where I'm like, all right, wait, hold on, your body's a temple, but why are we eating crap, you know? And one could say, well, God made all those things in that pizza and the soda. I'm like, yeah, the original ingredients, like the cane sugar, but not the overly processed sugar, like high fructose corn syrup. And, and yeah, wheat that was non-hybridized, but not the hybridized white flour that was used in the dough of the pizza. I mean, we could go on and on, but, you know, it, it falls on deaf ears at so some point because they're just like, hey... We don't want to be legalistic about what we're eating. You know, it's just like, all right, well, now we're going to use legalese language. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to treat my body as a temple by putting good stuff in that is as close as it can be to how God made it originally before man overly processed it. Even though, like, if you pick an apple, you're still kind of technically minimally processing because you're taking it from the tree and putting it in a box and sending it off. It's not just like biting it straight from the tree, right? So, <laughs> anyways... Don't mean to go down a rabbit hole, but that's just something I've observed as well. I mean, there's contradictions everywhere. I, you know, make mistakes and contradict, or I'm a hypocrite in certain areas too. So I'm not saying I'm not without sin, or I'm not without fault. But at the same time, I call things as they are as well. All right, point number 12 of 13 is they say it's taking it too far to think that God is in these plants and the purpose are going way too far. Well, God made everything on this earth where you kind of give credit is where things could be taken too far or not. And so, like I just mentioned, things can be overly processed by man from what God originally made, right? The point I'm trying to make is that it was a piece of corn and then you turn it into high fructose corn syrup, or it went from a cane stalk to sugar cane, right? And so it becomes processed. That's my point. <laughs> so you probably, be, anyways. Yes, where we put our trust in is important, and keeping things into perspective is important. And I, I get what they're saying. I get what they're saying, but let's. Um, I I guess where I stand is I enjoy essential oils from the brand I use. I have received a lot of benefits from the brand I use, but at the same time, they're not um, being elevated to godlike status for me. There we go. Number thirteen, and the last point that they make is it's going to wrap you up into thinking you are going to be responsible for improving your life and bringing things to yourself like workspace affirmations and little God's doctrine. Okay, so I get that. I get that. And from somebody, when I first started with the with the company I'm with, this was like seven years ago, this was one of their things that they mentioned. They're like, look at doTERRA. It's an MLM. It's all placebo effect and this and that. And they were just tearing doTERRA down. And what I will say is, yeah, there's putting all your faith in God and not doing any work, right, that's on this end, and then there's doing all the work and not giving any credit or putting any faith in God either. I think there's a balance between if you have a faith in God, whether it's Christian faith or something else, but we're talking about the Christian faith, <laughs> and it's saying, hey, I trust God, He's in control, but at the same time, I need to show up, right? I need to show up to the plate, and sometimes I'm going to strike out, and sometimes I'm going to hit a home run. At the end of the day, He's in control. I'm going to still show up and do what I need to do. And I think that will um, prevent most of this of what they're talking about. This whole discussion was in this video right here. And that video is called Why I Stopped Selling Essential Oils, Christianity, Idolatry, and New Age Marketing. So what's the summary of the 13 reasons why they left Young Living to pursue a life without Young Living? I think the main summary and takeaway that I get from it is they have some valid points, right? And it's important to know why you believe in something, whether it's the Christian faith or a network marketing company. And if you're anti-MLM, it's important to look at both sides of the coin to make sure that we have complete and accurate information that's interpreted properly to make sure we come to an accurate conclusion. I mean, that's for the anti-MLMers, and that also goes if you're pro-MLM as well, whether it's Young Living, doTERRA, or any other company out there that's retail-based that I've mentioned in my other videos before, Eden's Garden, Plant Therapy, Revive, or Acacia, whoever. It's important we have perspective and try to look at both sides. Now before I end this video, there are two videos on the end screen that contain more information and you're really going to love them because they build on the video that you're watching right now. Click and watch them when they pop up and I'll see you in the next video.